What if growing to 50,000 subscribers on YouTube is simpler than you think? <laughs> Today I'm breaking down the real strategy, the exact AI tools that took me from zero to 50,000 subscribers in two years. Now when starting and even today, the main thing that I concentrated on is the packaging. So just like how you're doing right now, I did a lot of research about growing on YouTube. And one of the things that really stuck to me was something that Colin and Samir said was, if they don't click, they don't watch. And I knew this to be true because I used to have another YouTube channel that had over thousands of videos. The videos were good, but no one was clicking on them. The thumbnails and titles were trash. Y'all are trash. Like y'all are so trash. So there was three tools that I used every week for the first year of my YouTube journey that grew me to 15,000 subscribers. Now the first tool was ChatGPT. I wanted to brainstorm about different thumbnail ideas, different title ideas, all inside of a free tool. So ChatGPT I used for my ideation phase. I would tell the idea of the video and it would give me some title ideas, some thumbnail ideas, and it would actually give me kind of like a little sketch, a little draft of what the thumbnail could possibly look like. Now I'm no graphic designer, so I loved how in the beginning I used ChatGPT for free because it allowed me to invest in what I really needed. Because what I really needed was a graphic designer if I know packaging is so important. Because sometimes you're just shooting in the dark and you really don't know what works. So I actually went to Fiverr. Majority of the thumbnails you see on my channel all came from Fiverr. I paid no more than $10. And now that they have AB testing, I'll pay for two, that's $20. Now for me, I found that investment being wise just because I know I was going to spend hours doing thumbnails and I could have spent that on actually learning how to grow YouTube. Now pro tip when doing with Fiverr, make sure you always have a reference. Don't be like, here's my picture now, make it up because that's the worst thing you could do. Research on YouTube, find some thumbnails that you like that you wanted to click on and give it to them with some of the pictures that you have of yourself. And the third tool that I used to help me get to 15,000 subscribers was Taja AI. Now, one thing I suck at is the admin work, like figuring out the description, figuring out the timestamps, figuring out the keywords, even though the keywords isn't as important as it used to be, still having that all filled out, I suck at. Taja AI is so dope because you could give it the URL to your YouTube video, unlisted of course, and you could get the titles, you can get the description, you can get the timestamps, you can get the keywords, and you can even get clips to your videos in a matter of minutes. Now, those were the tools that I used. Now, the very first year, I only posted twice a week. One was a live that I did every Monday at 9 p.m. Still do that, shout out to my content corner people. And a video on Friday, that was it. And the reason that was it, because that was the schedule that I can maintain, that I knew that I was going to be consistent in. So it's figuring out the schedule that you can honestly be committed and consistent in for a very long time. Not what's going to grow your channel super fast, because if you miss a couple of weeks, oh, YouTube's going to hurt you. Now for the second year of how I've gotten to 50,000 subscribers, let me break down the tools that I use now. So going into the second year, I still focused on packaging because that is still the attention grabber. So now that I've done Fiverr for about a year, I know what pretty much works and doesn't. So I actually resorted back to using AI tools for myself because now I have the foundation. So now that I have data that shows these thumbnails actually work, I can go into a nano banana. I can go into a chat GPT with chat GPT images and I can say, hey, Cre recreate this one, here's a new picture of me. But low key, Nano Banana is killing it in the game right now. And they're free. That's why I said I went a little bit backwards because I should have started with free in the beginning because of course, when starting a channel, you don't necessarily have the huge capital to invest in certain things, but I was serious about YouTube. Now you can go the free version with Nano Banana inside of Gemini or ChatGPT, but I use Higgsfield AI because I like to try out all the different image models and Higgsfield is the only one that has all the image models and the video models in one place. So I can see how Nano Banana does my thumbnails, how ChatGPT does my thumbnails, how Seed Dream does my thumbnails and see which one does it better. I mentioned earlier, YouTube allows you to do A-B testing. So it's good to have at least three thumbnails for each video. And so this allows me to ideate and come up with thumbnails super quick. 
Now, when it comes to the overall YouTube workflow that I do now is going to be inside of Poppy AI. So I replaced Taja AI with Poppy AI because this allows me to create a whole, what I call a YouTube brain. And when I'm saying Poppy AI does everything, I'm talking about it writes the script for me. It gives me the new content ideas. It gives me my titles. It gives me thumbnail concepts. I can even make the thumbnails inside of there if I wanted to. It analyzes my YouTube channel. It does everything. It's a set it and forget it situation. I put all the videos that I've ever learned from in one group, any PDFs, any notes that I've ever taken in one group, all the top videos that I have that can take my tone from it, I put that in another group. And this is all training the AI. And what's great about Poppy AI, it not only has like ChatGPT, it has Claude, it has Gemini. So all the models in one spot. Now I use this now, and I'm glad I didn't use this in the beginning because it is a little bit pricey. I'm not going to lie, but it's so worth it because I don't have to retrain AI over and over again. Now my year two content strategy changed up a little bit closer towards the end. Now I still do my live shows every Monday at 9 p.m. But what I started to do was because they were like three, four hours, YouTube wasn't really pushing out live videos as much as we want to. So that live video now gets trimmed down into a very shorter video. So it went from three hours to maybe an hour to 30 minutes in an actual video that now lives on the video tab. So technically on year two, I do a live video unlist that, make that only for channel members. And then I make that into a replay experience for my actual channel. And then I still drop a video on Friday. So year two, I'm doing one live video and two videos for the week. Now, when it comes to YouTube shorts, I could get better with that, but that wasn't a main focus on this channel. So it wasn't a big component of why I got so many subscribers. So when you're thinking about the monthly budget for year one, when it came to these tools, it was about like 60 to $70 a month. Now the expenses for year two went up because I had to pay monthly for Poppy AI. I had to pay for Higgs field and I'm still using Fiverr from time to time. So you're thinking like, averaging probably over 200 a month, but that's all covered because of the monetization from the channel, which let me know if I should do a whole video about that. So commit to a schedule that would work for you. That is your content plan. And which AI tool are you going to be using? Actually, now that I remember, I did break down how to monetize on YouTube and with your content. It's right here. 